Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Juicy Scoopers, if you are not part of my Patreon, you are really missing out. I am so excited for you to hear this Friday's episode. It shocked even me when I discovered this information, which you have asked to hear it all, and you will, and it is shocking. So along with lots of other Juicy Scoop, where I cover the week, my personal feelings on things, it's all there, and that is why people love it. And you go to heathermcdonald.net to join it. Also, all of my newest merch is there. You can order it in any size, many different colors and styles and choices and items with all of your favorite Juicy Scoop sayings. It's all at heathermcdonald.net. Now for Tammy Pascatelli. I have a friend of mine. I don't want to say old friend because we are old, but I mean, many year long friend, uh, fellow fe- funny female stand up comic. I'll take it. Boy mom, married, Italian, blue eyed delight. Tammy Pascatelli, welcome back to Juicy Scoop. Thank you, my friend. It's been a long time. Because, of course, you don't live in California, so it's hard for us to get together. But we do talk on the phone. We do talk on the phone. and But I do like coming to the studio because I get here just enough to see the growth. And I'm so proud of your empire that you're building. I mean, literally, you were the person who was like, I'm not going to let these people stop me. Come over. We're doing the show in the bedroom. Then you're like, I have this little bungalow. Now we're in this high rise. You're moving on up, George Jefferson. I love it. I love it. Unwrap the first of many presents this season's with Holidays on the House from DraftKings Casino. With hundreds of games, prizes, and promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. Right now, new players who play $5 get $100 instantly in casino credits. What are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code JUICYSCOOP and play $5 to get $100 in casino credits. That's promo code JUICYSCOOPS only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. One per opted in new customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credit awarded which requires one time playthrough within seven days terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holidays on the house restrictions apply we were just talking right before we started and i go wait what i always say save it for the pod <laughs> stop talking but we were talking about you know certain shows and i've talked a little bit about this that you know i can't get on the you know the view with the talk or whatever it sure. is and i don't know why and but i'm very curious and if someone can tell me why I won't even be hurt or mad. I just want to know because now in this podcasting world and stuff, I know that all of a sudden a fan could tell a housewife or a podcaster, Heather McDonald said this about you on her show. Right. And the person never bothers to go listen themselves. It's left to their interpretation, which I don't know if you're on a fifth grade reading level. You might be a a genius. I don't know, but it's up to you to figure it out. Or the fan is lying and misconstruing it to hurt you and then hurt the both of you because they realize by inserting themselves and giving you misinformation that now you're no longer going to be friends. And so I don't, sometimes when I think, well... You know, so you so I, you were like, what do you think it is? I'm like, I don't know why some exec won't have me on a show. I could have flipped my hair in their face accidentally in 1995 in an elevator. <laughs> and it could literally be that little. Like, that's how Hollywood works. It's really, if you're in a position, a little position of power, whether it's booking someone or the EP or whatever, yes. you can squash any guest any guest star, any acting yeah. choice, whatever, it could come down to just the one person. Well, it's the truth. I mean, and yet it does seem that that's just for women of our generation of comedy because the men have been naked in the streets with guns and they get rebooked and 
put on big movie posters Wait, and everything. Who was else. naked in the street? That was Martin Lawrence. But you know, I was <laughs> never on Chelsea lately because the girl who was a booker, even though I was always nice to Chelsea when I would see her at the store, she probably doesn't remember me at all now. But um, I remember there was a girl who was a booker that Chelsea brought from Denver, and. I had like I have hypoglycemia. If you don't get me something to eat, I I I'm not like Cy from uh, Real Housewives of yeah. New York. Like I, it's not because I'm hungry. It's because I'm going to pass out and you're not going to get anything out of me for like a day and a half. I'm more like Julia Roberts in, right. in Pretty Woman or what was it? Um, uh, gosh, now it's going to kill me. You know what I mean? Uh, when she's when uh, with Meg Arnell, Ryan? no, when, oh. when they're all in their uh, steel magnolias, I'm oh, more yes. like his. I'd like get her, her juice. Her juice. Yeah. Drink your juice, I'm, Shel- oh, Selby. I'm okay, Drink I'm, your juice. I'm okay, Mama. I'm okay, Mama. Um, I don't even do impressions, but yeah. um, so what I was doing with tons of press yes. in Denver, and we were from that was at the time when you used to do it from seven forty five a.m. until two o'clock in the afternoon which you would have to do and i remember at comedy works back in those days if if i if you didn't come in the day before to do all the press they were like don't even bother coming yeah and i do have to say <laughs> as comedians that is one of the wonderful things that came out came out of covid because we don't have to go we anymore. We don't really have to do no, the morning nobody radio wants and the morning TV shows anymore. I just talked about it with Chris Frangiola. Like, and the morning TV shows were like, good. We don't really want you anyway. Like, it was not. No one was selling tickets off of it. But anyway, so you had to do six a.m. Yeah, I mean, to it like was two. crazy. Okay. And don't forget, I came in from L.A., got it, blah, blah, whatever. And I was, I was literally about to have an episode. Yeah, and I was like, I'm hungry. And the girl goes, well, after the next one. And then she kept going after the next one. And then finally, I was like, pull over. I have to get something to eat. I didn't. I, and I explained it. I said, I'm, so, you know, this is what's going on. I'm hypoglycemic. And I'm like literally eating it like a little squirrel with nuts. And cut to, I find out that she's in charge. Like, why can't she wasn't I ever in get charge on? of the booking? Well, but I couldn't she, get on the show. No, she wasn't in charge of the booking, but she was um, very high up as far as being right in the mix of things. So she definitely could have shared an unflattering story that, she could, absolutely that, that did. could have been, forget it. And I didn't mean anything by it, but I think I heard, you know, that's when I really learned though, because I'm a loud Italian. I'm, I'm more of a man than I am a woman. Like I'm a broad, you know, and yeah. I didn't know how to gently say, pardon me, but I have the, you know, I was like, pull over because, you know, I, I, I didn't realize that people were so sensitive towards now. Now there's yeah. a whole generation. You have to be very careful. Right. If you if you correct them on anything, you know, they spit in your coffee. Like you but have also, to be careful. Also with the way social media is, is anyone can do a TikTok about, okay, let me tell you about the time I had to take Tammy Pascatelli to radio in Buffalo. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then... It doesn't matter. And even I just saw an interview, a clip of a small interview with this young kid. It's like a it's it's um, the dark side of comedy. Mm -hmm. And it's a small clip of an upcoming episode. And he's talking about Ellen. And he was this young kid that I guess she kind of picked up from obscurity, whatever. And she was going to like make him a stand up or I don't know what dance, make him do something. (laughs) And then he's like, and when it didn't work out, you know, my mom and I never heard from him from Ellen again. And so, thank God some of the comments are like, um, that's how showbiz works. And that's how <laughs> things work. Did you think that she was going to be your best friend and, and carry go to your you wedding? Back? Like, like, was she going to like <laughs> get a baby Bjorn and carry you around? Yeah. Like what, what, I mean, listen, I know she doesn't have a great rep or whatever, but it does come to a point where it's like anyone now can just say a story and it's like, yeah, you know, have you always been pleasant? I was talking to Joshua on the phone and I go, I don't know what else anybody has on me, but, you know, like I've joked, maybe I didn't have eye contact with someone in an elevator. And then people wrote, am I supposed to have eye contact with someone in an elevator? I'm like, well, if I don't, someone's going to do a TikTok about it. So you better believe I'm yeah. like, hi, how are you? And, <laughs> and, and then when I get, creepy. and then when I had eye contact <laughs> with someone at a Sephora, they did put it in the comments. They were like, she looked at me in the eye, hoping that someone would recognize her. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't. Yeah. So anyway, J- Josh was like, there is someone at American Airlines um, is many, many years ago. I think it still haunts him to this day where he was very frustrated with the customer service. 
And so I'm like, so are you saying there's someone at, at American Airlines that could emerge and like ruin your yeah. life? He's like, yes. Even though I called the next day, tried to find the person to apologize. I know that there is someone at American Airlines that I'm not pleased with how I spoke to, you know, and I'm like, I, I, so everyone thinks we have it so easy as stars, but I'm sure if you're just sitting at your home, you've had the pleasure of being annoyed with customer service that's, and not having it possibly haunt you and get you canceled. Yeah, that's why I think I'm not uh, don't have the career that I always thought I wanted to have because God is protecting me from my evil doings. <laughs> I mean, I'll never forget there was a time that I I was getting I was on a flight home to Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland originally. I'm getting my luggage and this man helped me with my luggage and he goes, I said, "Oh, thank you so much." And he goes, "Oh, you're nice today." And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I was on a flight with you once. I just seen you on this. This is, I saw you in Dennis Miller. That's how long ago it was. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know who I am, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm lucky that I still have a career, let alone who cares what level it is. Um, yeah. And I said, well, he goes, and you weren't very nice that day. I said hi to you, and you didn't really even say anything. And I only remembered by the grace of God because – the day I was doing the Dennis Miller show, my grandfather had died, and they told me on the way to do the show. So I literally, and what a great gentleman Dennis was. Dennis allowed the car to take me home, get my stuff, and catch a red eye to get to. So I was trying not to cry in public because my grandfather had died that day. So, But if he wouldn't have told me specifically that, and then I was like, yeah, okay, I guess people do have these things in their head because they have an interaction with you. And you're allowed to be human. Right. That's Yeah, you don't you know, know what that person, what call they just got, who you know, yeah. what was going on in their life and all that kind of stuff. And part of our thing as a stand-up is, yeah, you could be like in a fight with your husband, having seen something awful. And then you have to be like, our father, our heaven, hallowed be that name, that can you come, that will be done. Hi, everybody. How you guys doing? Welcome to Hilarities. So great to be here. <laughs> Tell the funny stories about your funny life. And like, you have to do it. You can't be like, you know. And, and I'm blessed to do it because yeah. guess what? It might be the last time someone laughs. You don't know what's going on in people's lives. Like, I have to remind myself when all these people, look, I've been around for a long time. I'm an OG. We are the generation of women that made it. We suffered all the indignities and the sexual harassment and you know, me staying in condos with convicted rapists for comedy condos to work and you're not complaining because you're afraid you're not going to work. Yeah. Um, and I get that I don't have as many followers and things like that, but I also remember that what you do can't be quantified. Laughter is only quantified in Hollywood. Sitting in the rest of the country, those people who show up and laugh, they just want to laugh. So it might be the last time that they get a chance to laugh. We don't know what's going on in people's lives. So it's wonderful to be able to do that. But I have to talk myself through it a lot. Other, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, let's get into some juicy topics. Okay. Okay. So TJ Holmes and Amy Robach, they had the scandal. They yeah. were, you know, both married, had an affair, both got fired. And then I said, when are they going to get their podcast? Of course, they got their podcast together. And they're on the red carpet at the iHeart um, Christmas thing. And you know what I just, I just did a photo. I just screen grabbed this one on the, on the red carpet. Because when I do the red carpet, and there's only been a few times like my husband's been with me. Most of the times he's like, who cares? You know, because right. then they're like, okay, could you get the guy out of the photo? Whatever. But when I see two people on the red carpet together... I think they must plan. We're gonna do. We're gonna giggle and do sweet nothing. Yeah, that's not. That, there's no way that when spontaneous, like, like, that you had all, the whole ride over here, and you know, and as you're getting ready to tell the funny stories and everything, and you're gonna save it for when you're on the red it's carpet like the, to be like to be like, oh, stop it. right? She's going. There, someone's in there. What? Oh, okay. <sighs> because they have a whole branding that they have to re... Yeah. America doesn't love this right now, okay? Well, it's getting juicier. So, according to their their opening episode, which is good, they talked about the affair. I have not heard it. Great. But I do think that's the way you start off a launch of a podcast. It's, hello, this, Rachel. This part was said. She... I don't think he was suicidal, but at one point, I guess she couldn't get a hold of him or something, and she was afraid the firing was so bad and so detrimental to 
um, TJ Holmes, she was worried that he had killed himself after the Good Morning America firing. So she worried about that. Or maybe the fact that he had lost his family. That shows you how she that she's thinking career. This man lost his family. She didn't care about her family. She only cared about her job. That's what she was. Well, now focused I on. don't know because I don't want to talk too much about something we haven't heard. Right, we're doing we what we're talking heard. about. We're okay. looking at a TNT. Okay. It me. might be very compelling and we might be very sympathetic. But also today, the juiciest of scoops, allegedly. Okay, this is an exclusive from page six, so maybe it's not an alleged. This is the happy ending we didn't see coming. The ex-spouses of the scandalous news couple, TJ Holmes and Amy Robach, have gotten closer. Page Six has exclusively learned that Marilee, his uh, TJ's wife, and Andrew Shu, married to Amy, are dating, according to multiple sources. I hope so. I hope they ride it all the way to the bank, because these two, uh, TJ and and Amy, Amy, they have to stick together now. They have no choice. They don't want to. They'll have to wait and quietly fade away. They got. They have at least a two year contract with each other. That's it. Or and with iHeart probably. Or with or but yeah. I mean, yes, just yeah. for themselves. They know it. Somebody sat them down from PR from Crisis PR and said, "Hey, you guys got to stay together at least two years, so it looks like it's real. You can't look like your home wrecker and then show up in people's homes every day. It's just not going to happen." So, well, they're not showing up in people's homes. They're showing up in people's ears. Well, but it's still their homes. But and I mean, I'm sure the goal is to make the the podcast a huge success. They should have called you it have Homes g- Wrecker. <laughs> have have a great have a great chemistry. Have a great following, and you know, then they launch it to a TV because they have TV experience, obviously. Yes, but no one was going to give them that TV show after the scandal. But you're right; if they can make this work and it's super successful for a year or so, I wouldn't be surprised if then they did return to TV. And you know what? Listen, but you're right; they'd have to stay together. It's not. M- Everybody's got their, I will never be the conscious uncoupling type, okay? Yeah. Like, that's just not going to happen. You're going to hear me screaming and people going to have a lot of stories to talk about. God forbid my husband ever wanted to leave. But um, yeah, so I, if they want to do it that way and however it works for them, and I hope Andrew and, for me, I lay with Andrew and Marilee. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, my. Well, I'm of course, it always team. reminds me of, um, looks like we made it, Shania Twain. Yes, it does. Shania does. Twain, it's the classic story. She and her husband were married for a long time. But. Which is why she wrote the song, Looks Like We Made It, because she was like, going to show you guys all we made it. Well, they did make it because he was making it with her best friend, who was also her assistant. They got together, and then she and the best friend slash assistant's husband, they got together. And I believe both couples are still together with each other. Are they still? I think Mutt is still with the other one, but I don't know about if Shania is. Oh. He was cuter, though. Who? The her assistant's man? Yeah, the assistant's man was cuter. Than, than, than her than man. Than Mutt, than the original. What a last name. I, it, all of, uh, That was his first name. Oh, really? That's awful. Yeah. Well, he's German. It's, it was some kind of, like, it might have been short for Helmut. Um, also, big switcheroo. And okay. the OC. Real Housewives of OC. Shannon Bedore, divorced from David Bedore, was dating John Jansen. And she talked all about him on the show. And she said he's the love of her life. And she's like, when I fight with John, it is devastating. We have normal fights that paralyze me. And they're like, well, it doesn't sound like a normal fight if you're paralyzed. But she said, I've never loved someone like this. And they, you know, break up. And well, what happened was, of course, there were, because there if you're were, so crazy that you can't have an argument with someone, you, d- when are people going to wake up? If you ha- can't just have a discussion or an argument with someone and that person has to become apoplectic, who's going to stay with you? That's a Sutton move right there. Yeah. That's a very Sutton. Uh, Sutton from Beverly Hills. Yeah. Yeah. So they were dating, you know, it was always like we're on off friends, whatever. Um. Then she, this is all, you know, allegedly was talking crap about Alexis, um, Alexis uh, Bellino, who used to be on Real Housewives of OC. She was talking crap about her who happened to be at the same restaurant she was at. She then took an Uber home and then realized, 
and she got out of the Uber. She didn't have her phone. This is all <laughs> what I've hear, heard. And so she didn't have her phone, I'm assuming, to call another Uber to go get it back at the... Okay, that makes sense. So she then got in her car to go back to the restaurant, oh. and that is when she hit someone's home with her car no one was hurt and did the fake and dog then walk. and then parked and then the, the car stopped running and then she got out of the car and was walking the dog and then the police came and then they realized that she was intoxicated and she got a dui so now people are wondering was that rumor of her talking about alexis bellino was did it have anything to do with that she suspected that alexis bellino and john jansen were more than friends or acquaintances Shortly after that, they were seen at the quiet woman in a group setting, but they were sitting next to each other. And now people has confirmed yeah. they are, in fact, dating. And I don't know if it's confirmed that Alexis Bellino is coming back to the show. But Tamara, who was best friends with Shannon, then not best friends with her when she was on the show, then became best friends again. And then Tamara, Vicky and Shannon did the Trace Amigos um, comedy show yes, uh, yes. At, at the Irvine Improv and at the Tempe Improv where they wore um, mariachi outfits and, you know, saying the song, you saw the video? I saw. We are here to whoop it up. It's what we got. We're the Trace Amigas. Anyway, they sold out. Yeah, people wanted to and come should, people and it was them. fun and it was great. But now Tamara said when I was at the variety thing last week for reality show women, she said on the red carpet, I'm not speaking to Shannon. And she also took a photo with Alexis Bellino. Okay. So now Tamara is hanging out with Alexis Bellino. Shannon feels like, oh my gosh. And, and, um, you know, there was, and, and Alexis's ex-husband, Jim Bellino sued Tamara, Shannon and myself. Which I cannot talk about the results of that. Okay. But that is a fact. Well, if you write it down, I'll talk about well, it. Well, no. <laughs> that is a fact. It is all over. Okay. It is all settled over I for all three that. of us. Sorry. That's right. But not that Alexis had something to do with it because they were, you know, going through divorce at the That's time. Not her fault. Right. But, I mean, this is going to get people watching Real House with Vosie. I know I won't be missing an episode. Um, yeah, but my God, or, or is Tamara <laughs> realizing that doing gigs at improvs across the country is not what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> and she oh, was like, how it took the me fuck 30 years. do I get out of the Trace Amigas tour with Vicky? And, <laughs> and also when you split it, I was like, okay, we know what we make on the road, right? Even if they sell out VIP, and merch you've and got three people and then you've got another guy coming to interview them. Then you have hair, hair and makeup, makeup, which we do our own, but, but they, they don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> and and hotel flights. Let me tell you something. Irvine, and the criticism. Because Irvine the people, makes sense to go. OK, yeah, you can only do Irvine once a year. Yeah. Anytime else you have to get on a plane with multiple people. Oh, no, it is not a huge moneymaker. And so I think I think it was a lot of things. I and think maybe won't let uh Teddy in. I heard that right, too. She wouldn't let right? Teddy come. And that and that and So Teddy that means was, you gotta have security. Yeah. <laughs> your own security. Because the improv has their own security, but you gotta right. have special no Teddy security. Yes. <laughs> so and you can't hire from Teddy's husband's company security. Yeah. You gotta find another. So they're gonna gouge you. So that's a lot of money. They got a lot of overhead. They have a lot of overhead. So maybe Tamara's just like, look. I don't even care. I just want to get out of the trace. I don't know the truth. I have no insight. I'm watching this as I see it. But I, I, then I heard from somebody else who said, I heard from Alexis myself. Now, this is a DM. Doesn't mean it's true. Okay. That this is blown out of proportion. And it's not a serious here's, thing. Here's what I'll It's not a you. serious relation between her and John. Well, here's what I know. This is because I'm not. I love your explanation caught me completely up and I know enough about the Bravo universe to yeah. catch it up. But no one is a rube anymore. When I first did, I did one of the first reality TV shows, Last Comic Standing, where we had to live in the house. And I watched it like, yay, at the beginning. And then by the time the editing and we were into the finals, I was hiding in my house with the 
curtains pulled and no lights on because I didn't know what kind of edit I was going to get. These people are so savvy. They know that sitting next to each other is either a statement or a storyline. So none of this is by accident. This is either either it's real where there's smoke, there's fire, or it's a real for the TV show. Thing. Well, what's interesting is one thing Shannon Bedore constantly said in the season was she was so upset that Heather Dubrow and the other women were talking about her relationship. And she was like, well, you know what? Now that you've talked about it, it's done. It's not just taking off her mic. It's done. John Jansen's going to break up with me. My life is over, but it's fine. It's fine. My life is over. My relationship's over. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And the women like Emily and stuff were like, you spread the rumors about yourself. You talked yeah. about it to every single one of us late at night. And so you put it out there and then what? We're not supposed to talk to each other when you've like, have you ever had a friend that's like, do not tell a soul, do not tell a soul and you don't tell a soul and it's real juicy shit. And then like six months later, you're sitting and you realize that she had told all three of you the same thing. And you're like, we could have been fucking talking about this. Yeah, like, for sure. like, like what? I like, we missed out on all of this. We could have analyzed and discussed it. Basically, that's what happened. And they're like, this is a reality show. And whether you tell us late at night on the phone or whatever, it's out there. And we did, we did discuss it, but you discussed it. You, you shared all this stuff late night on the phones and don't remember what you're saying because whatever reason. And so, but she goes, but he's a very private person. He's a very private person. That's what she'd say on the show. But then a, what would be frustrating is that Heather Dubrow, I remember, would say, well, she told me that he loves the limelight. He loves being on TV. And I don't think that's a negative thing. I think if you're a reality star and you find a guy like a Louis who is with Teresa, he he's very comfortable. He likes it. Yeah. It doesn't mean he doesn't love her. It means that she found a good match that's going to go to the shit with her and be there with bells on. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. <laughs> Just as long as he doesn't wear red, because then you won't be able to find Louis. He's gone. And I don't care what you say. You can write me. You don't. It, you can't. I, listen, as beautiful as Teresa is, she can't find someone to powder him. <laughs> I mean, good Christ. <laughs> well, I I think that... Um, I think it's hard to find a guy that's willing to do this stuff. And so, but I think, now there's another theory. She's a beautiful girl. She's very attractive. Okay. And she has a nice personality. Yeah, she has a nice personality. Gorgeous. And I'm sure they get along and met or whatever. And so it could be a real thing. Or, or if she is, now, she had a, an engagement after her divorce. She had a, an engagement with a guy for a number of years. Okay. Where she was with him and then engaged. They broke up just recently. And they went on below deck together and stuff. So, she no longer is married and she no longer has the fiance. Okay. And I don't know what his finances were, but she's single. And she meets John Jansen. And the Harry this, Dubin of the OC. Exactly. Okay. Or the Slade Smiley or whatever <laughs> okay. of yesteryear. But now Slade's been with Gretchen for 10 years or whatever. But, you know, does she, is she savvy enough to see him, have a little conversation with him and and flirt and go, I wonder if this could be more because the, knowing it doesn't take a genius to realize if I start dating Shannon Bedore's ex-boyfriend, yeah. And they're even remotely thinking about bringing me back, which they were. Yeah. I am back in, even if this is a short-lived thing, I'm back. Even if it ended tomorrow and they start filming three weeks later, there's going to be so much shit that they can talk about that happened in the two weeks of them dating that will fill up the months of juicy conversations at Nobu. You oh, know? for sure. And look, I mean, I think that if it let's just pretend that he does like the limelight. But mm -hmm. maybe Shannon was saying, I don't want to talk about it because she wasn't sure if he really liked her for her. Right. Maybe she thought he was using her for the limelight. And then now he's with Alexis. But Alexis is gorgeous, too. Yeah. So who knows? I mean, I love when these, there's nobody else in these towns. I mean, when they kept bringing Harry Dubin, they keep bringing this guy. There's nobody else. The Southern Charm people, they keep sleeping with each other. There's nobody else left. You're not on an island. This is not like, this is well, a I think, island. I, I think it is. Can't the, you ship people in maybe? Well, I think that is kind of the thing with, with um, you know, with the Vanderpump Rules 
it was like I felt that Raquel, Rachel Raquel, um, and I can't remember what was her original name. No, Rachel, and we knew her as Raquel, but she's back okay, to so, Rachel. Okay, so we'll call her Rachel. But when Ra- Ra- but even before she landed on Tom Sandoval, after she broke up with um, DJ James Kennedy, it just sounds like she parachuted yeah. out of a thing and just <laughs> and fell, fell right on a stick. On a dick. <laughs> like she just literally, I just picture her holding the thing with she those flo- goofy glasses. Wait, no, no, that she's they got on a parachute. Her, go- First, she floated <laughs> over towards Peter, the manager. Right. Then she floated over. <laughs> she's got her glasses. Then she floated over to Garcelle's son. Right. Oh, good. And, and then she went all those, the way down. Remember those Gucci, those Gucci yeah. sunglasses they gave her in the tent? And yes. was so. And then she just got down, and she now she's. She's on top of town. But I, I kind of was like, now she's only pursuing people that have a mic pack on. Yeah, so, so now she's with Bethany. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you see, this happens. I it saw. happens, yeah. Everybody thinks about mm, a dream vacation. I want to get away. Where am I going to go? Skiing, the beach, I don't know. Well, don't miss your chance to get away this season. And I'm talking about filling your sleigh with gifts from Way. You know how much I love Way's best-selling hair and body products, and they're the best gifts for yourself and everyone on your list. I've talked about their fast fix for healthy hair, and that is the hair oil. I really feel this is for everyone. It is a multitasking oil. It smooths the frizz. It seals my split ends. It gives me high gloss and a smooth finish, which I love. Also, for those on the naughty list, you want to try that leave-in conditioner. That is really great for all hair types. Also, I love their detox shampoo. I really love doing this because this is what cleans the built-up product. I use you know, a lot of... Um, thickeners and I use dry shampoo and I use a bunch of stuff like that. And I really feel like I love to get that deep clean and that detox shampoo from Way really does it. Don't miss your chance to get away this holiday season. Go to theway.com. That's T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com for 15% off site-wide when you enter pro- promo code JUICY. That's T H E O U A I dot com for 15% off with the code JUICY. Unwrap the first of many presents this season with Holidays on the House from DraftKings Casino. With hundreds of games, prizes, and promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. Right now, new players who play $5 get $100 instantly in casino credits. What are you waiting for? Cozy up with all the classics like slots, blackjack, and roulette, or play exclusive games you'll only find at DraftKings Casino to feel the holiday cheer all season long. Download the DraftKings Casino app app now and sign up with the promo code juicy scoop and play five dollars to get one hundred dollars in casino credits that's promo code juicy scoop only at DraftKings casino the crown is yours gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net in connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsible 21 and above physically present in connecticut michigan new jersey pennsylvania west virginia only void in ontario eligibility and deposit restrictions apply one per opted in new customer five dollar wager required max 100 in casino credit awarded which requires one-time playthrough within seven days terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holiday on the house restrictions apply now Ooh, this is it. real housewives of of New Jersey. Yeah. And um, you have a little history with some of the cast here. Uh, Why don't yeah. you tell? Full disclosure, I'm friends with Margaret. Uh, I love her. I love her, what she's I love stands her too. For. I like her a lot I too. I love her lines. I love her relationship with her husband, her yes. mother. She's just a good person. If you called Margaret and said, I had nowhere to stay, she would find a place for you to stay. Um, I, know, I know Melissa because of Joe Gorga. Uh, Joe was doing stand up and I got a call about sitting and writing with Joe and we tried and we did a couple shows together and Joe does his own thing and Joe is fully Joey on stage. He's Joey Go- Gorga and you know, he just really, I think he's a great guy. I think they're a good couple. I just think that he comes at things. I know a million, if you grew up in an Italian neighborhood or if you grew up around Italians, there's a million Joey Gorgas who just want to be, they just want to have fun. They just want to all love, eat. He wants to show off his hot wife. 
You know what I mean? I, yeah. So, I mean, that's it. I, it's like typical. I, yeah. I mean, I used yeah. to know Jacqueline. I used to know, uh, I did a show with um, the the one, uh, Caroline Manzo. I did, for, but yeah. now I don't, I don't know any of the new ones. The young ones I love. They're so cute. They're feisty. Um, do you, do you think that there's any help for Teresa and Joe Gorga? To make amends. No, not right now. Not as long as Louis in the picture. Mm. Uh, just from, you know, and I don't know that from him. I just, in my, uh, as a Sicilian, there are people that they don't talk to for decades. We are huge at not speaking. I'll never forget my grandfather died and my mother stood in the doorway between the kitchen and the living room between his brother and sister. My two great, my great aunt, and my great uncle, because they weren't speaking. So, but she didn't want to offend either one. So she stood in the middle so she could give them both equality. We're a culture <laughs> that is crazy based on yeah, respect that- and disrespect. And once you feel so disrespected, and I think that having Melissa in the mix really probably threw Ter- Teresa off. We, we come from a culture that you were, uh, you know, like the only fans you're never going to see. Any of these broads on the OnlyFans, at least none, none of the, the OGs, you know, the older ones. Yeah. Because we come from, you know, a lady in the streets and a freak in a sheet. You can be whatever you want, but they're not going to do, they're not going to do like Leah McSweeney with her. Oh, I have her, a photo of her. Hold on. Her bunghole hanging out. Wait, here we go. This is her, um, this is her page. I love it from the back. Uh, Leah, Leah McSweeney, just to remind you guys, she was on Real Housewives of New York for two seasons. She participated in the reality reckoning variety article that went nowhere. And um, so then she joined um, OnlyFans and bragged about how she made more in one week on OnlyFans than she did on Real Housewives. And I don't mean to be a bitch. But that's actually nothing to brag about well, because the people I know that the people that we hear about that make a lot on OnlyFans, it's not worth bragging about unless you make over a hundred thousand. See your kid's backpack right there. You know oh all my- that money you're going to have to save for therapy. <laughs> that's it. That's her kid's backpack right there. So, listen, I, 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 there's a lot of young ones I, I love. I think the Liam McSweeney story, her life story, is pretty depressing she's not gonna like me saying this but hopefully she doesn't listen to juicy scoop because you know so she struggled with drugs and with alcohol yeah she got something happened where somehow she was drunk or arrested anyway she fell she sued nypd and she got enough money to start the married to the mob sweatshirt cute Clothing Fashion. line. Yeah. It well, was cute. I mean, listen, before nothing, anybody else right, was doing it. Okay, fine. She got that. She has a daughter who seems like a delight. And then she gets on the show. And she's like, I was sober all these years, but now I'm going to drink. So we see her drunk for the first season. Then she's like, now I'm sober and I'm converting from Catholicism to Judaism. And just, to, I think, just to piss off the mom. But whatever. She goes to be. And now, and then. She thinks that she's she's suing Bravo or whatever about they she's suing for the uh, American Disabilities Act. She's saying that they this is all my understanding. And I I am not saying everything I say is factual. So relax. But that what I remember reading is that she's suing saying because she was bipolar. They didn't act properly. What well, that's the stance the attorneys are taking. Meanwhile, she joins OnlyFans and she says, "I made more." Than- yeah. Now, uh, my understanding is when you're in the first couple years of Housewives, you don't make a lot. Maybe right. six thousand an episode. So if she made six thousand dollars in a week. I know that is a lot to the average American, but that is not you're killing it on OnlyFans. Well, it's fans. not in New it, York anyway. Uh, by but the way. it's not you're killing it on OnlyFans. Yeah. You're not. And. I don't know. Listen, I would like her to win as a person. But I just think this photo, like, I cannot believe that this is what she posted. What's bizarre to me is that- And that's for $15. Yeah, I don't know. Is it really her? Does anybody know that? Because- You know what? I don't know. This, I did see this around. It could have been- You know what? Let me know. I won the Bud Light. I know she joined OnlyFans. If this was mocked up, I will do a correction on Tuesday. 
Only because but right now I don't to know take the background out to at least make that. Listen, there's I saw this several places, so I kind of would be surprised. Oh, I was gorgeous. Uh, she's a beautiful girl. She had a great personality, and she's like, "This is empowering to me." So, so good. You know what? You're right. And she's probably like, "I'd rather do this. I'm not going to get on another reality show, and I, I don't want to." What other job can I get that can make this if, if I've been banned from reality TV? But I do feel like, is that all there is, just being a reality star or OnlyFans? Well, like, there's no other skills I remember worth trying to do as a woman. You and I both, I don't, we probably were there at the same time. I used to go over to the Playboy Mansion on Sundays to do the movies and the stuff. Yeah. We would do the pool in the day and movies at fun. night. Right? And I could go to some of the parties. It was fun. And... Half if he listen, they changed the the trampolines. They pulled them out of there because of me, because I'm the one who really fell off the trampoline. You did? What happened? Yeah, I got drop kicked by one of the the broads because she didn't like what I said during the show. Wait, go back and tell the story. It's a real story. I tell used the story. It in my act early well, on, I'd like to hear it. He, they used to come to the comedy store all the time, and half he, and the girls, half and the girls, and then he had a big golf outing, and he wanted me to be the the MC headliner or, for it. Okay. So we yeah. all did a show and then uh, only a few of us could go back to the party. It was one of the the first times that no, I really kind of went. what year is this? So I used to go before I was a comic in 2000 and like 2000, 2001. But when I Me fell too. off the trampoline, um, it was before I ever did any Tonight Show or anything. So I'd say it was 2003. Okay. okay? And I got drunk. And when I get drunk, I, that's why I don't drink, because I call myself Terry Pescatelli. I don't know who I am. I'm like a crazy person. And I a t well, I said this. I'm a tough broad. I'm an athlete's daughter. I am with grew up with all boys. So I'm like competitive. Like, okay, let's do backflips. Let's do gymnastics. I was a cheerleader. Let's do this. And this girl apparently didn't like one of the things, because I used to talk about in my act class and dignity. And they had offered me Funny Women of Playboy in the like the oh, 90s. I remember that. I remember yes. being in my parents' bedroom because I think my dad always had a, a subscription and seeing Funny Women of Comedy and who was the girl? So it was Felicia Michaels. It was uh, Margaret Cho. It was, um, who did uh, Madonna date, allegedly? Uh, oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, and she's a great actress. Sandra Bert Bernhardt. Yeah. Um, I don't remember who else. No, there was Rhonda. Rhonda Shear. Rhonda Shear. So I, they had offered. I don't think it was Margaret Cho. I think. I feel like this was a little bit of an, a, a little older than Margaret. Because Margaret's like my age. I, I don't, I do not think it was Margaret Cho. No way. I, it was it, 1995. I'll tell okay, you this. Okay, there's, at 1995, there's no way it was Margaret Cho. Okay, so well. So, but all those other names, I believe you're correct. I definitely remember Rhonda Shear. Uh, it was 19, this is, here's what I know my from, okay. for, for me. 1995, I get a call saying they're interested in you. Now, I've been doing comedy professionally one year. Okay. One year. I left the radio station. I'm like, I. they offered me $25,000. I hadn't even made $25,000 the year before being a full-time comic. But I'm a good Catholic girl. I have, uh, my father was there, my brother's. I thought, how would they react? My brother's playing college football. There's their sister. And beyond that, in my brain, now this is where the difference lies. This is why I probably don't have a better career. This is, I kept thinking, I don't want anybody to think I got ahead by showing my tits. Like I didn't, a lot of young women now are so smart with it. Like they always make a man feel like they're on the precipice of a blowjob and then it moves things further, you know? But I didn't want that. I wanted people to just see me on my merit. What a dummy. I should have really just... Plus, it would be nice to have the pictures of that body because I had <laughs> real 34 full cup C that was... Not, I mean, I still had this nose, let's not pretend, but that was my whole joke. Like, if I'd have had plastic surgery, don't you think I'd have had my nose fixed first? I wish I would have had that. Body well, I and, remember and seeing that magazine. I just really remember Rhonda, who then went on. She was a stand-up, but then she went on to make a ton of money, like on QVC. Yeah, told me I should. I did one show with her in Vegas. It, we had to wear uh, it was a pajama jammy. Jam, yes, I remember that. And I wouldn't. I wore like big old 
fartsy pajamas, you know, the kind like you wear with the hot cocoa and, and Yeah, she Christmas. was trying to do the sexy, funny thing. Yeah. But I, I remember seeing that and I, you know, at now I was twenty five. If it was around then or maybe this same, was, maybe same age, right. right, yeah. And I was like, I thought it was great. And I was like, oh, my God, I think I would do this. Because I want to say they weren't totally naked. Were they completely naked? I, I, Everything for me to yeah. get to 25 grand, you had to be completely naked. Okay. And it just didn't. I didn't. I just literally, it didn't. There was a big difference when I grew up that we slut shamed yeah. a lot. <laughs> like, it just was I know, what it was. It was different. We just We did. can't even say the word slutty now. You just say sex positive. Yeah. You like could fuck we every did. guy on the football team and it would be like, you know what? She is so sex positive. How great that she's owning yeah. her vagina. But in our day, you were a big old slut. And you could do it. You just had to be quiet about it. You couldn't tell anybody. <laughs> like you, just, you could do it on the sly. So I didn't do it. But then he just, I don't know if he kept, wa- I think he was just fascinated by no. Okay, and then you know, I think that sometimes when you're funny and you're confident, I've always wait. Get known back to the trampoline. So that's so what I'm girl, saying. So okay, he so would have me be at these parties, right? So I'm at the party and have really liked me, but mm-hmm. not in that way, not okay? in a sexual way, right? I'm not blonde. I'm not, but yeah. he got a kick out of me, like, right? Like a lot of like the, a dad, yeah. Like he would all the all, like all the old, you know, when he had a uh, all those James guys Cam, came there, yeah, James Con, come yeah. over and say, yeah. tell, tell him, she, can you believe this one's a with tits? Like like that she's a comic and i just go uh, you know what i mean like I don't, uh, hi um my dad loves you um so she got mad because i used to do these jokes about like uh just because you get your it's old just because you get your boobs done doesn't mean you have to show everybody and then you're gonna cry when you can't find a good man you're gonna be like i can't find a good man and i the joke was yeah because you're a whore again 2000 like way back then <laughs> those times and, and and i guess i upset her and she i was like hey look at me and eleanor kerrigan was there from the comedy store and now she's and i'm like hey look at me and this girl comes and drop kicks me right and how do you drop it? Like she, she kicked you? Like, yeah, oh, like, kicked like, you. Oh. like like flying Walenda, like right into me, like in a WWE. And I went flying off and rolled down the hill and it was by where the peacocks were. <laughs> and, right. And I was drunk. You have to remember, I'm also drunk. Yeah. And I'm stuck in the mud. I'm 25. I'm like, I think I'm. And um, actually, no, at that time, I'm not 25. At that time, I'm 32. The 25 was when they offered me that. So I, I, I rolled really well. But then I couldn't walk for three days. And then the joke was, you can talk about class and self-respect and dignity all you want. But when you can't walk after going to a party at the Playboy Mansion for three days, nobody believes it has anything to do with an unfortunate trampoline accident. <laughs> So That's good. Yeah, but then they pulled the trampoline. It's all my fault because he was afraid I was going to sue him. I still have the card from the flowers he sent me. And it said, you're a classy broad. Hope you're Interesting that it was about a trampoline fear of being sued about trampolines. That, well, because that somebody all, else would have sued him. Well, it all goes back to Real Housewives of OC. There's a whole... My people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm not even going to so, mention it. Looking but it has back, to do with this a little bit. There's a, so much history here. Okay. Well, okay. So, um, so uh, anyway, um, boy, that was I tangent. love, I'm no, sorry. but I love hearing the Italian thing because when the Melissa, Joe, and Teresa riff of the wedding and all that stuff, we would talk about it. And I have, um, through marriage, knew of an uh, East Coast Italian family. And I'm like, is this an East Coast Italian way of dealing with stuff that is different than the Irish way? Oh, yeah. Different yes. than, like, I feel like, you know, different than the Jewish way, different than that, like, you know what I mean? Culturally, different than the Mexican way. Like, and I think that's what's so interesting about America, but I also think families deal with with stuff differently. They deal with the dysfunction differently. Yes. And, uh, you know, look, I feel like you should, I should almost stop it like they do football tape when that's when it's playing and go, okay, pause. You see right here, this is when she walks in the room and she doesn't make eye contact or she did make it and she just did like this and then you're like, oh my God, you gave me a look like that. That's why Dolores keeps her mouth shut. That's why a lot of people were saying like Dolores is boring. That's because she doesn't know what to say because she's such a good friend to everybody probably. And such a good Italian. And she doesn't <laughs> want to tell anybody's business and there yeah. are probably stories that would curl your toes that we can't, that we don't know. You know what I mean? I yeah. I might know a couple, but that 
that literally you just can't you can't say you know what I mean and the and what, and the other thing let's remind everybody that Louis husband number two Louis he's not Italian he's not Italian he's not Italian he's so I mean his interpretation of thing you know what he's coming from a different angle too yeah he's doing the block he's blocking he's doing that block off do you ever see this do you see that uh big rapper Nardo whose security punched out a 14 year old kid no, but yeah, because he just came up for an autograph. That's that's what Louis doing. Louis oh. blocking people and creating problems. I also think that there's a huge dynamic between sister in laws and an Italian family. What and, is that dynamic? Well, I think Teresa being an original sister, like I'm the my brother. I mean, I talk about in my act now. My brother to do to do. He's been married four or five times. There's constantly drama. If there was a reality show at our house with him in it with his wives. It literally, I would seem like the craziest person in the world because it's the conversation that he tells them. He tells them all the resentment of all the years and all the stuff. So I think that the, you know, I think I think uh, Teresa was like the queen and mm. she didn't tell her parents she did anything wrong. Everything was Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. And then Joe probably, you know, he's the little brother and this beautiful girl comes in and I mean, God bless, you know, I. She, Teresa's beautiful, but her hairline was not where it is now. When she first came on, she looked yeah. like she'd just come off the boat from Italy. Like when, when they all, we used to laugh when my cousins would come from Italy, we used to have to Americanize them. You had to do, everybody had to get waxed and shaved and, you know, <laughs> pressed out. That's how it worked originally. Now they're beautiful and the, and the fashion and everything comes from there first. But I think there was just constant look. I mean, yeah. instead of, we didn't also remember, that's the thing. Like, I love, I love Paige DeSorbo and Hannah, Be their Giggly Squad and all that stuff because that's a culture they're learning to embrace each other and, and lift women up. Look, Heather, we're friends, but we chose to be friends. I guarantee you there were gigs that you and I both don't know that it was either going to be me or you. That's how it was. We were not allowed to be yeah. friends with other women. Our generation was a constant competition. And I don't because know it was only going to be one of us. I've said that too. Yeah. Like if there was a lineup at the comedy store or, or the improv, there's 10 comics of the night. There's going to be seven white guys, one or two black guys, yeah. and one woman. And that's it. That was the demographic every night. Right. So- it would it would be very rare that there'd be even two women on the bill the night. So it the one thing that made sense was when, you know, some people would start to just produce their own shows, like Pretty Funny Women with uh, Lisa Sunstead and start doing stuff like that because at least we could all be on the show together, you know, and, yeah. and get a spot. They but never put you on the road. On the road, never, 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 never. It was always, I was the only girl, three, you know, a headliner, feature, an MC, and whatever, you know, I worked my way all the way up, but it was always just one yeah. woman on the you thing. You guys ready for a lady? Ready for a yeah. woman? I used to hate that. I used to go crazy. The other thing <laughs> is, is that you have to have a little bit of an ego to be in this industry or in reality yeah. or whatever. And that's not how women were trained to be like, especially coming, look at our generation, uh, like your mother, my mother, they might have had great personalities, but they weren't like shoving front runner people. The right? other thing culturally, too, about Italians versus like Irish Americans or, or whatever is the gift giving is something that we did not experience in my family. Are you the saying gifts. that because I just gave you some gifts? She before. did just give me a gift. <laughs> she shows up with two gifts. A bracelet that says trust because I love earrings. Well, the, the earrings, gift, the, the earrings. Guess what? But um, the gift, the gift giving is lovely, and it's also can be scrutinized if if it's not good enough. Like for coming to christenings and parties and weddings, and like I saw from this Italian side of the family a lot of discussion and nitpicking about and kind of shit talking if the gift was I'm gonna not send up to you. par. I found some of my grandmother's <laughs> diaries, which were completely boring. However, <laughs> um, she did have every dollar everyone had ever given my father, me, or my brother. She must have got it from my mother. Asked So it'd be much. like, Aunt, 
Aunt yeah, Maria yeah. See, gave, see Elena gave gave twenty dollars for the fifth birthday. Yeah, gave forty dollars for the so sixth she birthday. could give Only the gave exact amount, amount back. back. To those kids. Yeah. To whoever God, was on that. Yeah. And then so she could count that that she had given, you know, a certain amount of money to all of the for the weddings. And they better at least match it. And they better cover their plate. It's a very it's a culture that I love and I love every aspect of it. But, but I had to deprogram myself. I literally had to go to therapy to remove. Oops, sorry to hit this. I had to remove. Look, it because that's God trying to but kill I, my but microphone. I also, I also think that is why. The um the uh, the Real Housewives audience is fascinated and confused because I think the answer to me, my opinion, the answer is in the culture. The answer is in the culture between why they have their issues. In it my really, opinion, no, it and really then, is. Of course, exasperated by fame. You you have the culture, and then you have let's be famous and jealousy and looks and all of that along with it, and and, and on reality TV. And to it's me, really live hard. for an infamy. And when you do go back to those old episodes, you're like, whoa! You do see see differently as a viewer too. So I just find it, I find it fascinating. I find well, it, like, it very, is very fascinating because every Italian. Basically, who has ever been on reality TV has been investigated. Uh, what some got in trouble, Teresa, Mike's situation, uh, the Gravano's on um, on, on uh, Mob Wives. Um, but look at even me. Do you know that I, I literally, since I spoke my truth about people lifting my material, that I've been audited every year for seven years? That's almost illegal. If they do it one more year, I can sue the government. Are you serious? Every They've not found one problem, but every, ever since I spoke out against, like, it just so it, I think that there's a tendency that people were not. Because you spoke out because you. Because people, people were took lifting your, material. Lifting meaning taking take, your stealing, jokes. Yeah, stealing your jokes. Whether it was in. Whether it was on purpose or not, it just got to a certain point. But also Cosby tried to sue me, too. That was yeah, Bill thing. Cosby did? Oh, yeah, because I Why? brought him into the whole thing because I said at least he knocked his victims out first. Again, that was way before me, too. And and was this before he was before even? Before he was prosecuted. So you, I got a you, cease and desist So and everything. you said that before. What's this before? Who was the guy that, that got before, it going? Uh, right, was, right about the same time as... Um, uh, not who's Titus. my friend? What no, was his he's name? my friend. It starts with a T. No, no, the, the it's an H. You're right, Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah, Hannibal. He's my friend. Hannibal did a a, a set, or it was his, his show at the same time. And that's when he was like, "And we're just going to all like to act like this didn't happen." And that went viral in this day and age. Mm -hmm. A clip of it that someone took from the audience, and that is what truly got him reinvestigated and everything and everybody coming forward and everybody talking about it. Mm -hmm. And right With in Bill between Cosby, there, in the yeah. middle of it, they were very litigious um, to the fact that, you know, look, I don't have Jell-O Pop. I, I'm doing this podcast about crime and comedy and I won't even cover it because I'm like, I don't have Jell-O pudding money. I can't afford to say the wrong thing. I should probably right. should shut up right now if I had any brains in my head. <laughs> I'd probably just shut up. Well, I think at this point... You're saying fact now. It's all been proven that he has drugged women. Yeah. So he was convicted of that. So now you can say it, but when you were saying it, it, it was prior been to that. And that's why they were trying to shut you shut you up. When they say the streets talk, they talk and they usually tell the truth. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not anything new. Things right. that, when something comes out in the world like for example, all this Diddy stuff. We're not going to talk about it because I don't get you or me in trouble. But that's not well, anything I mean, it's new. Everywhere. I have it. I have it here. But I was like, it's just so dark and awful. Every, but, but just all this yeah. stuff is new. All this stuff, like when you watch these shows, in the you know Bethany's trying to talk about the reality tricks. They've been doing that when we had Last Comic Standing, and it was a voting show. Don't forget, we lived in a house, People and then they were supposed voted. to vote for us, right? Mm -hmm. They created scenes. They let talk about three women. I was the bitch. Kathleen Madigan was the oddball. And they made Bonnie McFarland seem like she was a whore, which she wasn't, but she did brilliant. Um, and that, but that was the position for women on reality TV back then, if you remember. Yeah. And then the seven guys who were all what they were, who we loved, those guys. But 
they were cut. There was a scene with me that looked like I was plotting against somebody. And if you look at it, I have two different outfit on. Like, here's me like in this. And I'm saying, were you on the first season? Second, we had 18 million viewers. It blew up. Wait, who was? I don't want to brag, but I had 320 MySpace followers. Who was your (laughs) 320,000? You mean? (laughs) Who was your winner? John Heffron. Very funny. Okay, Gary. The year before was the Vietnamese guy that won. Dat Fan won. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but you know they they did a lot of things. Reality has been the executives at NBC turned their back on us on the upfronts because they didn't believe in the reality the scripted division they turned their backs they don't want to talk to us you know when we started talking early in the show i went to tell you this there was this thing that i did at the groundlings where these two guys were going to do a pilot presentation of a sitcom that they wrote and they're like can you play the girl that works at the hardwood store or whatever and I'm like, sure, thinking, if this gets picked up, I'll be able to get the right. <laughs> so anyway, so they have all these executives come to see like this read through or whatever, not a read through, see it acted out of these two weird guys that work at a hardware store. And we all think it goes great. We practiced and did it, never got laughs and all these suits are there. And after it's over, the two, and I go, well, that went really well, don't you think? And they're like, it's dead. It's never going to happen. Hmm. And I go, Why? And they were like, we looked out, the two guys, who were like the main company groundlings at this time I was in the Sunday show, which is like the B team. And there was an executive there that was trying to get into the Sunday show. And the main people voted on which people from level four would get into Sunday show. And they didn't vote him in. (gasps) And he was very pissed and weird and vocal and angry about it to the point where, like, he made a stink. And now he is the decision maker. Yeah. And they were right. Went nowhere. And that's why I was saying how it could just be one person where it's like. Yeah. You don't even know. Like, I'm sure. I'm going to get you back now. I have Death by Paper Cuts. That's the name of my new book that I'm writing. (laughs) Because it's, I mean, I once put a drink down on, I was at NBC doing a development deal, and I put my drink down like this on what I thought was a coaster, but it was, and the guy was like, ah! And it was like this antique, this piece of, this fossil that he had kicked up, and (laughs) and I'm like, okay, guess that meeting's over. We're done. That's There's a million stories I can (laughs) tell you why, and then there's probably a million more why not. That's why it's hard when I... I love I I'm I love the the reality stuff. I really do. But when they're complaining and they're trying to do this reckoning and stuff, you came to the table with your personality. You didn't come with the talent. So sometimes the personalities don't show and they had to do tweaks to get it out. I do think that some of it's ridiculous. You don't, you know, you don't ply people with alcohol, but then again, you know you're going to be on TV, so don't drink the alcohol. Yeah. You know, I know that I I literally one time on a third show Saturday called myself Terry Pescatelli. Thanks for coming. I'm Terry Pescatelli. I never drink and go on stage again. Okay. My name is Tammy, by the way, if people don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. So good for you. Um, Okay. A little follow up on the Michael Orr. This is from the blind side. I've talked about this. You know the sh- you know the movie from the Blind Side how they these they was based on a real story right. the Chewies um, adopt uh, they we thought they adopted him he went to Mississippi he became an NFL player and now he has come forward and he was suing and saying um, you didn't really adopt me and I didn't get my fair share of the movie the Chewies came back and said. You, along with our two kids and ourselves, we each got the exact same amount, 138000 for the movie. That's right. it. We, you know, that's what we agreed to. That's what the life rights. No, but, you know, you sign this thing and you don't know it's going to be Oscars and this and that. That's what they got. So then they, so he's saying all this awful stuff about them a couple months ago, you know, that they didn't care and that they did this conservative sh- conservatorship and they said, well, that's because he was over 18. You can't he, adopt an adult. Yeah, he was over 18 when he was playing football in the high school. And and then, you know, well, this is, well, well, the movie was not, it was based on a true story. So if it showed him, you know, like it didn't have to be completely real. Right. Like, so people wanted to be that. smarter. So now it comes out 
that the Tuies are showing text messages in which he threatened them and said, give me $10 million right now, or I'm going to go to the press and say all this stuff about you, and it's going to look horrible. Yeah. And they still were like, you know, whatever. And then he said, now that you didn't he respond. Said, Michael, Michael, now- I got a gun in my purse, Michael. I have I have lunch with the president of the PTA, the ARA, and the AARP. <laughs> That's what is she's that, is that from the movie? I don't remember what she you know, yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, she was. Oh, like, she got out the there. The district her, attorney, her, and she taught him how to play football. Know. And of course, then we find out no, he knew how to play football before. He was already playing there. Okay, fine. Who cares? That's the movie. Anyway, he then says, "Now that you didn't get back to me, now it's going to be fifteen million. Yeah, that's extortion. So, I think we get the picture now. It's I, I mean, yeah, like so. Um, I don't know where all his money went. People think that this could be caused from CTE, <clears throat> which is the brain injury that happens to football players sometimes. And maybe that is why he's acting this way. I think he could have run out of money. I think I think it could be a lot of things. It's just really sad because we yeah. love the story. And, and I truly believe these families exist and they do treat these children that they did not give birth to as their own. And they still said, we still love him. We still want to make up with him. But... Because this lawsuit now is here, we, we've got a share of the evidence of him trying to yeah, well, extort and, us. And they immediately, when he first came out with it, they weren't even going to cancel Sandra Bullock. They were like, and I know. And that, poor, what is and that poor have Sandra Bullock, that all came out a week after her partner died of ALS. Wait. And when she won the Academy Award for The Blind Side was about Jessie a week James. after when Jesse James was cheating on her. On, with multiple porn stars. Yeah. So she was like all of it was just all crazy. For the one. Yeah. For the it's it, which is so sad because now you like have you ever looked back at things in your life? I have. And there's been some like times where unfortunately there was this amazing thing happening in my career that may never happen again. And at the same time, an awful thing was happening personally. And it bums me out that they were happening at the same time. Cause I'm like, fuck, you know, that overshadowed that great thing that may never happen. And that's exactly what happened to her. Well, that's what it's like being Italian, by the way. That's what what it's like being Italian. Cause you can never focus on the good. Okay. (laughs) That, that's now you've just explained that's, that's the problem. Right there. That's that's with Italians. Yes, that's right there. So, but yeah, no, that's exactly with with them. I think the other thing that's kind of bums me out with this whole story is that it it reminds me again when I talk about my brother and everything. People think that you're on television and that you literally have a tree in your backyard that you're picking money off of. So true. They yeah. never count your bills. They only count your checks. They don't understand what it takes to maintain that you have an agent, a manager, attorneys figure things out. You have travel, you have this the, the government takes this da 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 cuz I pay all my taxes and it's all completely correct. <laughs> but they never think about that. They only think the money. And it's sad that even he didn't really wasn't fully present to understand. Now, do I think that they probably, the husband and wife, could have given their $138,000 combined to him? They could have, but not $10 million. But also at the time, he was making millions Millions of dollars as an NFL player. So like, I think they were like, this is fine. Well, I'd give them that and be like, if that's what you want, take it, because we really don't even want to be part of this story anymore. Yeah. You can have it. But the truth is, is that, look, like... I. Where does he think ten million? That movie didn't make ten million dollars that went to them. Right. That's what they didn't go to them. They sold their life story and their life likeness. Yeah. It's the studio then that made all that money. And yeah, like like they didn't profit. Like they they were already wealthy. They already had their fran- food franchises and stuff, which is so, great. So they were like, I love that the story is so you know inspiring and there you guys are going to make a movie out of it. Great. They probably didn't negotiate hard enough for themselves because they didn't need the money. And also, they're not movie people. So they, they whatever attorney they got might have not known to put in the contract. And if it gets to this amount of millions, then they get an extra bonus. And you know, the way people do back end now. Yeah. And they not people don't always they know. They didn't that. know if Sandra Bullock was gonna play right, that it or me. On, it could have been on <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> like it been, right. It could have gone it could have gone nowhere. To yeah. the shed <laughs> with me. 
<laughs> yeah, but it's true. Like they didn't know that it was gonna be yeah. such a hit. You know, nobody does. It's about heartbreaking. These it's heartbreaking that people because just yeah. count your money, and also because it was a beautiful story, and these families do exist. You know, and I I've talked about my really good friend who is a mom of two football players, and she um, was very not didn't like officially adopt them, but had boys stay at her house and and worked with their moms and, you know, to make it a, a better environment for them to succeed in school. She was that person that's like they can live here and she kept in touch with them and every, and there she says my son and my grandchild yeah. and all of that. So it's like I don't want people to think that this can exist because it can. Oh, it's totally it's beautiful can. and it comes from really good hearts, you know, and just because the people are white and wealthy does not mean that their heart wasn't in the right place, you know. Just to the fact that he made it to the NFL, he had to have a support system that really yeah. helped. I mean, that's what I always think that I see that Travis Kelsey's mom before Taylor. I just the story last year. Can you imagine being the mom whose sons are playing each other in the Super Bowl? I know. Like she has to have a jersey cut in half and sewn together because she knows it's both her kids' dreams, but only one of them is going to be the winner. Like that's got to be heartbreaking as a I mother. I can relate because um, my son Drake, who's 21, and my other son, who's 17, he's almost 18, they were, um, we were playing pickleball <laughs> and they were, each took a cousin. Okay. So they were playing against each other. And I literally said, wow. I, I Who know, do I pick? I know how it feels to be the Kelsey mama. Oh, you should. And I did not know who to root for. I didn't know if I want to go for the little one. See? Or the firstborn. Do I go for the heir or the spare? Well, if the spare gets the fair haired <laughs> uh, Taylor, then I think I think he won so, all the way around. That so I know what it's like. Yes. To have two boys in the Super Bowl. I didn't know I was talking to someone who had really lived, <laughs> lived this. It. Oh, I, I mean, lived it. I, I don't I just want to ask you. So yeah. then <laughs> how were you able to navigate post the pickleball? The extravaganza that was the pickleball. Well, tournament? luckily we went to lunch after and um once everyone was fed, no one cares or remembers because they're boys. Oh, so it's okay. all so good. They've, reco they've recovered and they're not jealous or anything as long as food was part of the afternoon. It, I don't. Even, I honestly don't even remember who won. I do. <laughs> I, I, you called me and complained about... No, I'm just kidding. You <laughs> didn't at all. Uh, um, okay. Um, I thought this was whoa. interesting. Cardi B and Offset, who I believe they're married. They definitely have two kids together. And... Yesterday, they unfollowed each other. And of course, the fans figured it out. And listen, if you're mad at somebody and you don't want to see them going out because you're taking a break from them, you can mute them. By unfollowing is you want the fans to yes. know that some shit has gone down and you are pissed. Yes. And, and you want them to turn on your husband, ex-friend, business partner, whatever. Yep. But when you hit that unfollow button, it's like literally saying, let the games begin. Yes. You know, it really is like, all right, let's see how this goes down. You want to cheat on me? Let's see how this shit works right now. See if you can handle it. Now, what I will say is, again, that's generational. This generation unfollows each other. We followed each other. You want to cheat on me? I'm going to follow you everywhere and find <laughs> where you go and what you're doing. It's just, I, it's the adaptation. In real life. In yeah, real life. Yeah. Switch cards with your best friend and buy a wig and drive past their uncle's house like we did everything. <laughs> it's interesting. These two have always fascinated me. She was really, talk about reality show. I mean, she was on uh, Love and Hip Hop New York, super dynamic personality, super dynamic personality. They barely, they didn't even show any of her musical rap. stuff. Yeah, none of it. And so she was just destined to be a personality out there. So it's amazing to see the level that she's gone to. And, and that, and that, I think, you it's, know, a lot of people don't pop like that from reality. I no. mean, it's probably, there's only been like a handful of people that have like really gone on and done something, her being the biggest for music, but like, um, like Elizabeth Hasselbeck. You yeah, know? for sure. She's oh, probably right. the only, like, she came from Survivor and she was a regular on The View. Now she's done and over it. We don't hear from her. That's fine. But she definitely hit a level of success. 
that she would have never gotten that would have never been discovered had she not gone the right. survivor route. So it's like there I do see why people do reality TV and I don't think they shouldn't because you definitely can emerge and do other things. Yeah, well, she def. I mean, I think Cardi, I'm glad. I, I Again, I, I like to say that. I like to see her win. Elizabeth Hath- Hasselbeck, I remember with her on uh, Survivor because I watched it because she was just fading away. They had her on that show and she was getting skinny. She started out tiny. Yeah. Like, I think if you're ever going to go on one of those shows where they put you on an island, you have to fatten eat, yourself up. Eat, eat, eat. You have to show up like a like you can't even move. Like Yeah, if, but then you have to be in a in a bikini so you want to look kind so of good. what then you get development deal. then you get all those de- deals because you got skinny people that you could be the spokesperson for you know yeah ozempic stone <laughs> come up with something like what did you take ozempic no i just banged my head against the rock and i felt passed out and didn't eat and like I, just, I don't know what it is yeah oh my god um okay this is juicy Okay, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. We've talked about Monica. Monica is the new girl who is in a lawsuit with Heather Gay, who is the owner of the Beauty Lab. Before she got on the show, she got some Botox and she did not pay her bill. Right. And then Heather Gay's company sued her. She had a different name. So when Heather wasn't even aware that this new girl that was on the show was the person that she was in this lawsuit Come with for $4,000. And once it became... Out, then she countersued and said that the Botox wasn't good. Yet then Heather's people presented text messages in which she wrote and said, I love my Botox. I never look better. I'm telling everybody to go to the beauty lab. But really what got her hired was that she had an affair with her husband's sister's husband, brother-in-law that way. Yeah. Bro- okay. okay. And they have found him. And here he is. He's hot. He's a hot uh, fire department chief. He's a Utah fire department chief. And it from what I read, and this is um, I think this is this is from the Sun it was revealed and Bravo Snark and all these people have picked up. But what they revealed is what I, what I read was I was thinking that he stayed married to the sister. And I was like, wow, this kind of sucks. That this story is out Mm -hmm. because if they are going to try to make this family work, I'm almost happy to hear that they didn't stay together. I think it makes Monica's story less awful, honestly, because he not not that it was her fault. I just felt bad that if this couple were going to forgive each other for if she was going to forgive him for the affair and they're trying to stay together and then the mistress ex-sister-in-law goes on the show, we knew we would find him. We knew we would find him. But from what I read is, no, that marriage ended as well. Well, I know that exact story in real life. Okay. I know that. I mean, not them, but I know I had this friend. um, I'm going to try to make sure that I say uh, she got very sick. She had brain cancer. Her sister-in-law came in, her her brother's wife, to be the caregiver. Okay. The sister-in-law and the husband of the sick woman had an affair. It blew the entire family up. The two of them went off together for a little bit. It didn't work out. Eventually, the woman dies. It's just a big, it's a sad story. But the hardest part was the parents, still the parents of the brother and sister whose, whose spouses cheated together, they don't know what to do. They still have to interact with the grandchildren. Both of their kids are miserable. I mean, it's a it's a horrible thing what they did, you know. And both of them have kids that their exes have their the grandparents have to deal with. So here we are just posting it right out. And by the way, is that when Monica got the Botox from Heather's oh, she place? She looks gorgeous. She looks fantastic there. <laughs> what? She does I feel that's another thing. I mean, of, he's hot. People have affairs. It happened. Uh, they found him. I'm glad I'm not the one that found him. I wouldn't. I did not want to search and find it. Um, hopefully, the ex sister in law and his ex wife has gone on to live a happy life and recovered from the fact that her husband cheated. Yeah, let with her leave. sister in law. And they hopefully, cheat, let him go. Monica's ex husband is living a nice thing. But I mean, it is. It is fascinating that you cheat within your own family and it's like also that the fact that you like you brought this 
I, I just thought between her ex husband and and the fire chief's ex wife, that brother sister, like. It was like you, you know, like they, they're like, it was your wife. Well, it was your husband. Well, it was your wife. Well, it was your husband. Like, yeah. I hope that their brother sister relationship can come back if it was good before. I hope it could come back now that they're both divorced. Yeah. And be like, let's be real careful about who we bring in and make sure that <laughs> these people are not, not attracted to each anybody. other. Yeah. <laughs> not, no one, is, forget it. Thanksgiving never is share off. <laughs> We are never sharing a house together for a ski weekend. Never. No way. Never. We are never going to the shore house. We are never getting in a houseboat. We are never getting in anywhere that has a basement where the two of them could go down and get extra Diet Cokes and have a quickie. I can't live that life. I can't <laughs> live. I I have dated cheaters. I've had all that stuff in my life, but I can't live. I can't. I, I, I could, my husband, thank God, I love him and I, I trust him as much as I'm going to trust somebody. I'll never, you know. But I can't live where I'm afraid to go to the bathroom because I'm afraid that you guys are going to be Fucking. blowing each other while I'm going pee. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't live that way. You can't sleep. I don't care how much your toes are curled. If your fists are balled up, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. That's you a fun expression. I don't really understand it. Like if you're, you know how you're always nervous. Like if they yeah. curl your toes because you're in love and you're having. Oh, sex you curl and your toes up. from fucking. Yeah, and okay. sex. But but if your fists oh. are balled up, is that an old Italian thing? Or your is that fists just being balled up? No, what you just said is that a Terry Pascatelli, a Terry Pascatelli. It's probably Terry. It's probably <laughs> the drunken part of me. Um, am I Rachel Raquel? No. Um. Um. Anyway, I just loved this. Oh, look, at Kaylee. Me. Coco is Cuco Coco. How do you say it? Quoco. 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 <laughs> say you say it. Says wearing faux bangs in 2013 SAG Awards was the worst thing I've ever done. It's an exclusive by people. There's an amazing photo of her. And I just want to say, I I don't think I've loved a woman more. Yeah. That has talked about a hair mistake from 10 years ago. And I too, it wasn't on the red carpet, but I will tell you my faux bang story. I'd love to hear it. Okay. There was a kiosk in the mall. And this probably would have been. Oh, I've remember, seen those hair kiosks. I remember kiosks. the office I was in. I was at Chelsea lately. It was the original studio. So it had to be like before like 2012. Okay. Somewhere. So it's around this time. And I, you know, went and they had the fake ponies and all this and the bangs. And. You know, I put it on and I was like, oh, my God, I look so like chic because I don't have bangs and I don't want to cut bangs because of this weird like side cowlick thing. So bangs like never really worked. Like I could do like a side bang, but it never really worked. So I'm like, I think I'm jamming. <laughs> I think it looks really good. So I go. To- <laughs> By the way, that's not even real hair, probably. Right. Oh, no. It it's was like, like you can't it curl it. Like, it's just okay, don't curl. So I like. In my office, which my desk looked out, and we always had the doors open. Like, we always had our doors open in these these offices at Chelsea Lately. And I decided to wear it on Monday to the office. <laughs> and I don't know if it was Tom, our EP, or Chelsea. I don't know which one saw it first. But they told the other to say, uh, something fucking died at Heather's head. <laughs> you need to go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I had a month and I don't know if I went to the writing meetings, writers meeting or not, but thank God I realized that day it's a mistake because Chelsea or Tom were both Hysterical. called me out and I was like, all right, I took them out and never wore them again and never wore them on the round table. Thank God. But I can see why people did it. And I want to know, have you found successful faux bangs? 10 years later because obviously this was a mistake yeah and um it looks well, like well, a really bad fake because i once cut them in oh, that's horrible what made you do that uh is watching uh shannon doherty on 90210 <laughs> it's all her fault god bless her i hope she's healthy but uh that i mean it's all her fault she looks so cute with those bangs they were straight across brenda they look so beautiful and they, they I, curl, remember, so- I remember heather debro of real house i suppose see like was getting ready for the reunion and somebody doing her hair talked her into the bags 
<gasps> so she comes out with the bangs and Andy's like, oh, okay, you have bangs, you know? And she's like, yes, you know, and whatever. And then Terry, her husband, comes out. We're going to bring the husbands out. And that's the first time he sees her with the bangs. <laughs> and he's like, um, and we went, we were, I was like friendly with them at that point. And we like went out to dinner after that. And I go, okay, now the bangs are growing and she's looking. And I go, it doesn't seem like you're too thrilled with the bangs. And he's like, well, my God, you know, my wife has a perf perfect face. You don't put bangs on a perfect face like that, which I thought was really sweet. Yeah. But like, I just think, yeah. It, though, so those are two <laughs> the lessons to be learned. Be careful with the bangs. Not for everyone. I had the one little clip and it just kept sliding down. <laughs> it's like a holding it back to say hello to people. Amazing. Um, okay, last thing to talk about. Kristen Cavallari oh, okay. is getting a lot of uh, press off of this. She basically said, it's you know, there's nothing wrong. Um, it doesn't, quote, she's getting slammed for this. It doesn't fucking matter when you sleep with a guy or not. Basically, she says, I've talked to dating experts or whatever, and they said 90% of their best couples boned on the first or second date. So if there's chemistry, go for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean your relationship is going to be more likely to happen or not happen if you wait. And so people are, she's getting slammed for it. Um, what by is your who, thought? Though? Just by people in the comments. Not, yeah, because look. Not, like, not that people are like marching on yeah. Washington. They're writing from their phone and right. while taking a shit. Well, I mean, it's like, first of all, look, again, it's all, we had the rules if they didn't call you by Wednesday, you couldn't go on a date on Saturday. You know, that's how I got, I hooked in pair, uh, Peter, Stop was the it. rules. Really? The first and only time I used it. So should I be mad? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you got scammed. And those two you women got, got divorced, you remember? Got, yeah, you guys. Uh, I've talked about it, you guys. It's a classic book. It's from the 90s. It's called The Rules. And these two women who were happily married got together and like interviewed their grandmothers or something and created a book. No, no. Maybe. No, it was a book. I think it no, was an I, article. No, 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 no. They, I guess they did the rules to get married. I don't know, but they created the rules, yeah. which did work when the book came out because there was no texting and there was no iPhones. So you could, um, a guy could leave a message on your voicemail and you could technically, or your answering machine even, because voicemail, you could call it and check it. Yeah. But an answering machine, you had to physically be back in your house to press it and see that someone called. So you, it would be easier to play hard to get, which was the guy calls you and you're not home because you're out dating other Wait, men. Let me pause. Living your life. Let me explain what hard to get was. <laughs> It was not giving it up on the first night. That's what it meant. It yeah. meant it meant that you treated yourself as if you were special and they were lucky to get you. Right. And to get, so that was a different thing. Or, you, you know, like you didn't. You, if they called you on Wednesday and said, right. do you want to do something on Saturday? You no, didn't go. They, you had to. Get the, yeah. They said, even if you're not doing anything, make it seem like you're doing something. It totally worked. For me, that's great. I. I got it. I read it. I met Peter, and I was like, and I remember he. Um, I was driving home from work. Don't mean to brag, but I did have a cell phone, and because <laughs> it was like nineteen ninety nine or something. cost you seventeen dollars a minute to make the phone yeah. call from it, but okay. <laughs> and he's like, "So, do you want to go to movie night? Do you want to, you know, well." He, he, we had not said, I love you. We had not said, am I your boyfriend, girlfriend? Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I can't tonight. I have plans. And I did. I had plans to go to this charity event that I think Shannon Bedore had something to do with, believe it or not. She was from Real Houses Above Sea because she was like, I create charities. I don't know. And it was called like the Bachelor Ball or whatever. And I, I figured he could figure out that that was happening because there were guys he knew. But I was going. I was going with this guy. And I kind of felt like I was sort of cheating on him. But the rules said, if he didn't ask me before Wednesday, this guy asked me. Mm -hmm. So it was like a, you dressed up and we went. And I did make out with the guy. But he left. He Peter calls me at 7 a.m. that morning. Hi. 
sneaky to butt. To see if some yeah. dude's over. And I go, hi. And he goes, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just waking up. And he's like, would you like to go to breakfast? And I go, okay. He's like, all right, I'll be there in a half hour. <laughs> Hysterical. So we went to breakfast and then we went rollerblading and hung out the and whole then day. He it down. And then he locked it down. Yeah. It's not going to have me go to another bachelor ball. But, and then I remember, so everything's working out. We're doing great. And then we go to visit my sister in Palm Springs, Palm La Quinta, where her husband and she lived. And they were just married at that time. And she starts joking, completely revealing the secret of the rules. Stop. Talking That's about horrible. the you rules. You weren't supposed to tell anybody. I know. And then she the goes. The first rule of rule club is you don't tell anybody the and rules. And he goes. Oh, I was wondering why this girl wasn't calling me back. Oh. Because you're not supposed to call them back right away. Wow, what a hater. You're supposed to act like you're busy. You're no, doing shit. No, I had shit. a friend that sent herself about flowers. That's what it said. You're supposed to send yourself flowers. So they show up and mysteriously there's some roses that just are being delivered. Or whatever. <laughs> I didn't do that because I didn't have the money. I probably could have if I would have had money. But no. Yeah. Yeah, you had to. But see, that's it's like. When people say to me about comedy, like, what do you, that they're being comedians, do I have advice? I said, do you want to be funny or do you want to be famous? It's two separate things. Do you want to just date or are you trying to get married? There's two different things. If right. You, like, you're, what, what, what Kristen is saying is not wrong, but she's already been married. She's just in the time of her life probably to have fun. You know, I think that there are certain things to those rules that stay no matter what year it is. Yeah. I think there is an element that is inherent to men. That they have a competitiveness. Yeah, they want what somebody else has. The 100% they do. And I think that it that is not, it's a different time. Women just haven't realized that. And they're, they're, they're allowing, they're being like, well, I'll come over. I'll send you nudes. I'll do this. Like, There's one no of, mystique. One of the things that, that Leah McSweeney said, and one of the things like, I, I've sent so many losers nudes for free. Why not make money off the nudes? Why is it a standard that you're just sending nudes to people that aren't that you're not in a relationship yeah. with? Why that's the sending the nudes? I think is worse than just sleeping with someone on the first date because you, what are you getting well, out just of that? Put it on your business card. Yeah, like, like we don't even have business cards anymore. But why don't you just pass those out? Why don't you put it on your profile? Picture? Yeah, and so I think, I think it's, it's so realize that guys may not even realize it because the sex has come so easy to them. They might not even realize that they are competitive beings you know but they are they are about business they are about sports and they will be about you so make it a little bit of a challenge Look, and, and they'll that will yeah. kind of incite them i learned that from the rules but i also learned it i lived in la has these you know the weird enclaves of people sometimes and i moved into a eight unit apartment building that uh was i'd like to call it a stripper colony because it was myself and a young black attorney and then strippers of different different times in their career. Like we had this one I used to call Magda because she was old. She'd go get the she'd go get the mail with her boobs just swinging in the wind. She'd lay naked and she'd she'd go dance in Henderson on the weekends. Then we had this beautiful one that was like, the first time I met her, she handed me this bag. She goes, My boyfriend's coming. Can you hold this for me? I don't know what it is. It was her luggage. She had actually just come from, she had went off with the Sultan in Dubai. Oh, she's and one she of those her girls. boyfriend. And she came back and opened up her bag and she had like $10,000 in cash. Meanwhile, this has been in my house the whole time. Um, one collected pets. One had like, she was so beautiful. But her house was like, there was flying birds and free, free form rabbits and two dogs. I mean, it was insane. But those women who I probably wouldn't have been friends with at home. I'll just be honest. Like, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had the same circle of friends. But in Los Angeles, we were the same friends. And comics have Mondays off, and so do strippers. They really <laughs> taught me. I mean, I, again, I, you know, I was like, hey, how you doing? I was flirting like Joey from Friends. They taught me about mystique. Have a little bit of mystery. Like, what, they were in the sex business, but they weren't just tossing it out there. Right. Every time. So, they taught me about, look, if you're too excited to be with them, they don't want you. Yeah. The guy at the strip club goes for the the stripper that doesn't pay attention to him. True. And it was so funny. I learned so much about 
that feminine wiles because my yeah. mother didn't have a mother. Her mother died when she was young. So I didn't learn girly things. Yeah. And they taught me how to be a girl. And so the first guy that I was like, oh, I'll be just blow off was my husband afterwards. Like, See? Like, yeah. I blew him off. I was dating other guys, not sleeping but with look, them. But look, it worked yeah. for both of us. Yeah, I showed up at a party with another guy. When I met my husband for the first time, I was on a date with someone else, and I knew he was going to be there. And I said, then I'm going to go, I'm going to keep the date. See? I think they want something that you just already showed. It's like you pulled up yeah. in a nice car already. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nobody wants the person who's just sitting there waiting for him. Right. Then eventually they want you to wait for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I loved connecting with you. Tammy, you have a, you have a podcast. I do. Tell us about that because I think that sounds right up the Juicy Scoop Alley. So it's, it's, um, it's crime and comedy. I do it with my best, best friend. I've talked to you about her yeah. before, Laura. She, Laura Park, she used to be a police officer. She's retired now. I used to go on ride-alongs with her to just see her. Um, but we started talking about all this stuff that's going on because we're lucky that as young girls traveling around we didn't get murdered apparently in the 80s there were serial killers everywhere i happened to stay i mentioned earlier with a guy who was a star search winner vince champ and he actually uh victimized a woman the night that he stayed with me and i had to be interviewed by law enforcement because they thought stayed he was with you boyfriend. while you're doing stand-up well in the condo we weren't i didn't know him w Condos used to just throw people in. They were flap houses. Right. I didn't know him from Adam. I didn't even work with him. We were just crossing like, you know, I was leaving and he was coming, but we ended up staying in the same uh, apartment that night. And I don't want to say this word because I don't want your algorithm to go off. Yeah. But, you know, he victimized a woman. Yeah. And um, I might have already said the word and messed it That's up okay. for you. I it apologize. Um so the night that I was there, but I didn't know anything about it. And the law enforcement thought I was his girlfriend because women weren't on the road. And they're like, why are you in an apartment with this guy? I'm like, I, that's just where they put us. But I was also dating the guy who cheated on me. So it took a little while for them because they were like, you're, you're, can I just say the word then? Yeah. Your boyfriend's a rapist. And I was like, oh my God, I thought he was cheating on me. I didn't realize they were talking about him. I thought they were talking about my boyfriend at home. So it was a little bit of a three's company thing. But Laura and I talk about all these crimes in comedy because not making fun of it, we really just laugh at ourselves. But there's been so much. I mean, from Phil Hartman to literally uh, Roscoe Arbuckle, you know, Fatty Arbuckle, he was the first big, big name. He used to make a million dollars a week in the 1920s, a million dollars a picture in the 1920s. And there was a woman who died at one of his parties. Alcohol was in prohibition. And he stood trial three times for her murder. So there's a lot of stories. Oh, I love that. Up. So it's called The Cop and the Comedian, a true friendship crime podcast. I love it. And then where can they follow you for your dates and everything? What's your Instagram? At Tammy Pescatelli. Not Terry, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> Go see Tammy. She's such a great stand-up and you have lots of dates and you're always out there. And listen to her podcast. Enjoy. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Thank I you love for you. my Italian jewelry. <laughs>